This is a part two of a video that I did a couple of years ago. I just want to elaborate more on the number three and the significant importance that it has in the scriptures. The number three in biblical numerology, it means harmony, or we can actually say a unified purpose. According to mankind, we have body, soul, and spirit. The book of Genesis is the topic. In verse one is the theme. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we go to verse two, it says that, now the earth was formless, empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. Formless, empty, and darkness sounds like a bad combination. In chapter one of Genesis, there is a trinity of trinities that is written there. See, we have time, space, and matter. In the beginning, that is time. Now, what is time? Past, present, and future. Number two, he created the heavens. That's space. Space is length, width, and height. And the earth, that is matter, which is solid, liquid, and gas. Oxygen is an element that can be a solid, liquid, or gas, depending on its temperature and pressure. Another example of a unified purpose. In Revelation chapter 13, verses 18, it says, Let him who has wisdom, let him calculate the number of the beast, which is the number of man. And his number is 666. Now we can see that there is a satanic trinity. You see, man and beast was created on the sixth day. The number of man or beast is six, one lower than perfection. So if a number is lower than perfection, that means that the number six means imperfection. So we have three sixes. Mankind and beast will come together to form an imperfect unified purpose. In Revelation chapter 16 verses 13, John the Revelator said, I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And we have the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Satan, what he has a demonic trinity, is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. He likes to simply counteract what God is doing. He wants to be like God, but he has to counteract by manipulating creation. The Magi, which were wise men in Christian tradition, the noble pilgrims from the East, who follow a miraculous guiding star to Bethlehem, where they paid homage to the infant Jesus as King of the Jews. Going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts such as gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Jesus was resurrected on the third day. Uh, Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jesus even compared himself to Jonah when he said that just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not easily broken. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. That represents God the groom and the bride. Braiding these three strands symbolizes the joining of one man, one woman, and God in marriage. By keeping the Lord at the center of marriage, his love will continue to grow and bind the couple together. Written quite often in the scriptures, God refers to the Hebrews, the ancient Israelites, as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I know that there's a lot of things that you may want to add 
um, that I didn't speak on. You're more than welcome to share it in the comments section below. All right, you guys, take care. Have a great day.